What's up everyone, I'm Callum Montos and we're into the final few days of the season so as always it's time to take a look back at some of my most insane battles and craziest team comps that I ran this season. I've also had a ton of incredible submissions this season so if you'd like to see a part 2 featuring viewer submitted battles make sure you leave a like on the video and if this video gets 750 likes I will record part 2. Now before we get into the battles I want to quickly talk about today's video sponsor G Fuel. G Fuel is an energy drink aimed specifically towards gamers and is designed to help improve your energy levels, focus, endurance and reaction time which will all help to improve your overall performance when battling in the GO Battle League. I personally hit my highest ever ELO this season at 33.29 which at the time was well within the top 200 players in the world and part of that is down to drinking G Fuel. Last month G Fuel brought back a fan favourite flavour watermelon mint and given that my favourite flavour at the time was regular watermelon I was very excited to try it out. Now I'll be completely honest with you I was very on the fence about this flavor at first and it's why I didn't make a video promoting it straight away but over the past few weeks this flavor has really grown on me to the point that I might even enjoy it more than the regular watermelon flavor. If you want to try out this new flavor or any other flavor from G Fuel make sure you visit the link in the description or in the pinned comment and you can use the creator code Callum at the checkout to get 20% off your order. So with that being said let's get into the question of the day. What has been your favourite video that I've uploaded this season? Let me know in the comment section down below and with that being said, let's finally get into the battles now. Alright, so going into the first battle, and this is the winning battle, like I mentioned at the start of the video, we lead into Alolan Sand Slash. Now, for most fighting types, this is an incredibly dominant matchup, but unfortunately, Panchamp's preferred moveset doesn't include a single fighting type move. I think it has low sweep and low kick as its uh, moves that are fighting type. We go for a crunch, we do at least grab a shield, we get the defense drop, but they're able to fully Shadow Claw farm me down before I even make it to a second charge move. So you can see, we are really up against it here. I'm going to come in with the Cub Chew, tank what I thought might be an Ice Punch, which they did go and throw, which is really good for me because that is resisted. They then throw a Drill Run. I'm going to shield the first one here. Going to go for a full Lick Farm down. Now the opponent will make it to another charge move. I can't afford to double shield, so the Drill Run does big damage there, but then they swap into a Swamper. Do they know about the Trailblaze damage? We full send it here. We one-shot the Swamper. We boost our attack. We get the Lick Farm down as well, and the opponent has a Venusaur in the back. Now unfortunately, Cross Chop is resisted. Can can we at least grab a shield? No, we're not able to do so, but my switch clock barely comes up in time. Can we outpace them to the back-to-back -back charge moves here? We go for the Icy Wind, deep off in their attack, and can we make it to the next Icy Wind? The opponent throws the charge move. Are they at the back-to-back -back Frenzy Plants here? They go for the first one, but they won at the second one, and we can make it to Icy Wind number two, taking out the Venusaur, and I'm able to take that game. Alright, so going into the first battle, we lead Gastrodon into Azumarill. This is a fairly neutral lead matchup, made slightly better for us because Mudsap does gain one more energy this season. We're going to go for an Earth Power throwing straight away on the CMP tie with the Azumarill, and the opponent lets that go through. We also get a defense drop, which could be quite significant here, as that might allow me to just go straight for a Body Sam for the second charge move. Once again, going to throw on the CMP tie. Does this KO with the defense drop? No, it barely doesn't. So at this point, I'm just going to let my Gastrodon go down. Not really any point in preserving it here. Azumarill is probably the hardest counter to my backline, so I'm pretty happy to see it gone. The opponent comes in with a Bomber Snow. I'm going to swap, make a catch, but I also swap one turn early. That allows me to get a full Incinerate in for free, and that damage is going to be absolutely huge up against that Bomber Snow. Now the opponent comes in with a Shadow Gligar. I'm going to go for a Rock Tomb, grab a Shield here, and this is a really tricky matchup. Of course, Dig is going to be double super effective, but I'm going to be very ballsy. Cool that it's a bait, and it is the bait. That's resisted damage. Now, I could live the next Aerial Ace as well, but I might as well shield this up. I can now go for another Rock Tomb, and at this point, we're looking to be in a pretty good position. Rock Tomb is going to be grabbing the final shield from the opponent, and now I'm going to swap into my Sligu. The opponent's going to bank the energy, but it doesn't matter, as we can now go for a Gonk Shot. Gonk Shot going to be taking out the Abomber Snow, and I'm able to Water Gun farm down the Gligar, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to that opponent there, and into the final battle of the set, we lead into a Skarmory, so this is a slightly positive matchup for us. The opponent got a safe swap into a Galvantula. I'm going to swand with my Sneasler, expecting them to just go straight for a lunge. They always do, and they do. That is double resisted, but, I mean, forget the charge with damage. These Volt Switches are absolutely chunking, and unfortunately, I'm not even going to make it to two charge moves here, so I end up losing switch advantage, and I already feel like it's going to be a Lantern in the back, so this is not looking too good for us. We're going to come in with the Shadow Galley. 
they're going to debuff me again, but I have to shield this time as this is a neutral lunge. We go for the confusion farm down, expecting the Skarmory to come back in. We're just going to go straight for the close combat. We are debuffed, but even so, it still does huge damage. We swap and the opponent swaps at the same time. It is the Lantern, but it's a Water Gun Lantern, and this is just so much better for the Barrel as we go straight for a Hyper Fang, dealing huge damage to the Lantern and at this point. If we call this correctly, if this is a Thunderbolt, I don't believe they make it to a second move, and it is a Thunderbolt. We go for the farm down, they do make it to a last second charge move, but I do believe this is just a Surf, it is persisted, it still does a lot of damage here. We can go for one Water Gun, throw a good timing, go for a Surf, and I'm not 100% sure if we do make it to the charge move, so I swap into my Gallade, and the opponent is going to fire off a charge move here. They're going to go for the Sky Attack, Sky Attack will be taking us out, and we do just barely make it to a last second Surf, we're on 1 HP, and a dream, but Surf takes out the Skarmory, and I'm able to go 5-0 in this set. So GG's to that opponent there, into the next game, and by the way, I did actually build a few new Pokemon just for this challenge, like the Di the Diancy here in the back, because why would I have one built anyways, but we're going to see the opponent goes for a Hydro Cannon, that does quite a lot of damage, but then they swap into a Gligar, do they know about their Ice Beam? Unfortunately, they do end up shielding up. Makes sense. We're a water type, so I'm going to shield this up just so I can get off another Ice Beam before they can farm me down or go for a charge move to take me out here. But we're going to go for the Ice Beam now. Ice Beam is going to grab the final shield from the opponent, and they don't really over farm too much either. So I will let this move go through. Aerial Ace will be taking us out. And now we're going to wait out the switch clock, come in with my Diancy here as I am resisting these wing attacks. And then I'm going to swap, I'm going to catch the dig onto my Licky Licky. And this dig is going to do some decent damage there, but Licky Licky is fairly bulky. The opponent then comes in with their Talonflame, and this is a really smart play by the opponent. I was thinking, I'll wait for them to throw here, because then I can just farm them down with my Diancy. But the opponent is choosing not to throw on purpose, which is really smart, because obviously, the less farm they give me with my Diancy, the better chances they've got of winning. But I'm able to recognize that. So so I put them into one rock throw farm down range so I can get the farm down. They only get off one fly and now all I need to do is shield up against the Shadow Swamper. I don't believe the Switch Clock is up yet. So now we can go for a Moonblast up against the Swamper. Moonblast takes out the Swamper and I'm able to rock throw, farm down the Shadow Gligar and I'm able to take that game. Alright, so going into the first battle, and I want to mention as well, I did use two elite TMs for Hydro Cannon and Blast Burn on the Empoleon and Infernape respectively. Tor Terra actually felt like I didn't need Frenzy Plant. Stone Edge is better coverage, and here we are getting hard counted so far, but I do at least make it to a Sand Tomb, and we grab a shield. I believe the opponent probably would have lived that, but they wanted to make sure, of course, they don't know I'm not running Frenzy Plant, and obviously weren't counting, or don't know the counts to Frenzy Plant, but here I correctly shield up the Shadow Ball, get the Waterfall farm down, the opponent comes back in with their Toxic croak i'm gonna over farm as much as possible go for a drill peck here and drill peck should be grabbing the final shield now i'm gonna swap into my infernape and the opponent ends up throwing on a lineman and that is really bad for the opponent because now i can go for a full fire spin farm down and the opponent's got a drift blim in the back so i'm gonna over farm here go for a blast burn and this is a shadow infernape blast burn one shots the drift blim and i'm able to take that game so GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we see Escavalier in the lead, so not ideal for us whatsoever. I'm just going to go for a Discharge throwing just before they make it to the next charge move. And Discharge goes unshielded. We swap and we snipe with a Volt Switch from my Shadow Magneton. And then they come in with a Zoomerill, and this is now looking really good for us. Horror lead, but Discharge, going to grab a shield from the opponent, and we are going to overfarm. The opponent throws just before we make it to the next Discharge. I'm going to shield up the Play Rough here, and they will need a few more bubbles to make it to the next charge moves so i go for good timing throwing off the two volt switches go for discharge number two grabbing a shield and the opponent over farms too much we make it to a third discharge in time taking out the azumarill and they've got galarian wheezing in the back and this is going to be game over i'm going for the wild charge immediately and even though it's neutral damage it easily one shots the wheezing and i'm able to take that game I right, so going into the first battle, we see Shadow Persian into Quangsa, a fairly neutral lead, but a lead that we do unfortunately lose. And you're going to see basically every neutral lead Persian will be losing, it's just not a very good Pokemon. And the awkward thing here is I can't swap out either because I can't have my 
Nido King aligned to the Quagsire, but because they've got a Mud Boy in the lead, it's very likely that there's a Skarmory in the back, and my backline really does not appreciate Skarmory, but I do end up grabbing a Shield Advantage, which I'm pretty happy about. Shadow Mewtwo with a Shield Advantage can be absolutely devastating, so we go for the Side Strike, taking out the Quagsire, and let's see, the Pope does come in with their Skarmory, so I'm gonna over farm here, farming to at least a Shadow Ball before firing off a Side Strike, and this should be grabbing the final Shield from the opponent, so I'm gonna swap into my Nido King, and luckily for me, the opponent swaps at the exact same time. That is best case scenario for us, because now I can shield up the Body Sam, go for five Poison Jabs, and throw the Earth Power on the CMP type with the next Body Sam, and this will be enough damage from this range to take out the Vigoroth, and now we've only got resisted Charge Boost to throw up against the Skarmory, but an Earth Power, even resisted, will still do some nice damage to the Skarmory. It puts them into range where hopefully one Side Strike will take them out. We do, of course, have Shadow Ball on the Mewtwo, but we're not going to get there in time so it just depends does a side strike ko we are barely gonna get there we live with literally one hp and a dream side strike coming through takes out the skarmory and we're able to take that game so ggs to that opponent there into the next game we see lombre as the first pokemon flood baby that was in my smallest pokemon theme team that i did run and the third and final pokemon will be chin chow so going into the battle we're going to see a seismitoad so an amazing lead for us the opponent say swaps into Conkelda, a little bit slow to swap but i swap into my flood baby and this is actually a pretty positive matchup i'm going to shield respect the stone edge and the opponent does full send a stone edge so now i can't over farm here we're now going to go for a psychic this is non-stab but honestly Conkelder in the Great League is very glassy, so we take it out there quite comfortably. And now the opponent is recognizing that we're actually running Vine Whip as the fast move, so we're dealing double super effective damage. We go for a Dazzling Gleam, and the opponent uses their shield. They can over farm just a little bit, go for a charge move, and the opponent is going to go for the Earth Power to take out our Baby, and then they instantly swap into Electivire. Now, this is a bit of a tricky matchup here, but Chin Chow is still pretty bulky. This is a non Shadow Electivire, so we do barely live that. I thought about going for a Thunderbolt, but honestly, they're probably just going to shield anyways. So we go for the Bubble Beam, grabbing the final shield from the opponent. We debuff their attack. We barely miss out on a second Bubble Beam, but I should be able to live this. I feel like they're quite likely to bait, and they do bait with the Ice Punch. So now I can just go for a full Bubble Farm down. Going to shield the next Charge Roof here. As they go for an Ice Punch bait once again, they swap back into Seismitoad, but I outpace them to the Grass Knot. Grass Knot easily takes out the Seismitoad, and I'm able to Bubble, farm down the Electivire, and take that game. But GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we see Lantern in the lead. So they say swap into double. I'm going to stay in initially just because I'm hoping I can potentially catch a Body Sam onto my Frillish in the back. So we go for the Moonblast. We go for one extra Fairy Wind. We try to make the catch, but we are unsuccessful. And now this is probably going to be a payback. It is. It does huge damage. We go for the Ice Beam, but we actually lose CMP. And I'm thinking if it's Body Sam, we probably tank it. But it was a second payback. So we've just lost Switch Advantage. That is certainly not ideal for me, but we come in with the Shadow Haunter, and this is definitely not another payback. So I let it go through. It will just be a body sam. We can tank that fairly comfortably. And they come back in with the lantern. Are they going to respect the damage from a shadow ball? Or will they let it go through once again? They let it go through, and now we're gonna swap. And the opponent has a vigor off in the back. Now this is winnable. I go straight for the Moonblast. They've got two shields. I'm thinking they probably let the first one go through, but no, they do shield the Moonblast. It was safer just to go straight Seed Bomb, but yeah, probably a mistake on my end because now the opponent will outpace me to the next charge move. So I will use my shield here as they go for a Body Sam. We're now going to over farm. I'm going to go for a Seed Bomb this time around because obviously I need to threaten and basically force the opponent to throw their energy immediately. And now what I'm going to do is actually no shield this. Body Sam takes us out. We've got very little health, but if the opponent tries to make a catch, we're able to Shadow Claw farm them down before they get off the charge move. And now we've got two Ice Beams to throw. First one doesn't quite take them out, but the second Ice Punch will be enough damage to take out the Vigoroth, and I'm able to take that game. And if you're wondering why that just happened there, it takes one turn to swap and then one turn to activate your charge move. So that's two turns, which is the duration of the Shadow Claw. So that's why I was able to take up the lantern before the opponent could throw their charge move. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we're going to see Whimsicott in the lead. So this is one of those matchups where we can't swap out because unfortunately... Raikou is also not going to have a great time here, but I did lead with Suicune just in, in case we see like the Mud Boys. Luckily for me, we barely hang on there and I can go for an Ice Beam. Ice Beam is going to grab a Shield Advantage, so I'm pretty happy with that. We're now going to come in with the Entei. The opponent swaps into their Polyrath. 
<clears throat> Excuse me there, and the opponent's gonna throw their Icy Wind straight away, giving me a full Volt Switch in for free, which allows me to get a full farm down, come out with 100 energy. Now we are debuffed in our attack, but we can go for a Shadow Ball, and this is still gonna do huge damage, and it does put them into range where one Wild Charge will be enough to take them out, and the opponent just fully sacrifices the Whimsicott, as they've got a Dugong in the back. Now this would be a struggle, but with the boosted Fire Spin damage, especially now that I can go for a Flame Charge, it's actually going to start adding up. Now we grab a Shield there, we boost our attack, I'm hoping they don't bait with an Icy Wind, they full send the draw run, and now I will make it to Scorching Sands on the CMP tie, and in neutral situations, Scorching Sands does slightly more damage, it is enough damage to take out the Dugong, and I'm able to take that game. Alright, so going into the first battle, we see Crocolore into defense form Deoxys. Now, this is a decent matchup here. We are running Crunch. Of course, the opponent can be running Rockside, and Rockside might be slightly more common now that Pokemon like Talonflame are more common in the meta. So, they are running Rockside. I should be able to make it to two Crunches before they get to that second Rockside, though. So, the opponent is actually going to settle for a Psycho Boost. So, I will let this move go through. Psycho Boost, not going to be enough damage to take us out. They swap into Sableye, but we can now go for Disarming Voice and Disarm voice is going to hit for super effective damage. We swap into Crocorock and the opponent barely misses out on making it to a return. So I'm going to no shield. It is just a foul play. We do live that reasonably comfortably. Crocorock actually isn't as bulky as I thought it was. Typically with like the middle stage evolutions of Pokemon, they're going to be slightly bulkier than the final evolutions just because of how like the CP formula works. But Crocorock actually has a lower stat product, I believe, than the, uh, than the Crocodile. So that's not ideal. But yeah, we're going to come in with the Croconaw and we let the first move go through. I will shield the next move here. I know the opponent swapped out basically as soon as they got to a Psycho Boost. So I'm going to go and try and swap and catch perfectly onto my Crocolore. The next Night Slash, they are in farm down range. So the opponent probably going to swap back into Defense Form Deoxys. Can we make it to the back-to-back -back crunches? The opponent is at a Psycho Boost right now. We go for the crunch. And we were at the second crunch there, so he can throw it immediately. This crunch will be taking out Deoxys, and I'm able to water gun farm down the Obstagoon and take that game. So GG's do that opponent there. Into the next game, we see Haxorus into yet another Azumarill. So gonna play this out pretty much the same as I always did. If the opponent wants to farm to at least a play rough before throwing, they're typically gonna try and throw on good timing, which is then after seven bubbles. So I can always go for the Earthquake, landing it, and then swapping, and then making that catch onto my Escavalier, because if they farm any more than that, they will go to over 100 energy. So just based on when it's good to throw their charge moves, I'm typically able to catch that move, which is really nice. We go for a draw run here, can't flip this match up, so I probably just will let this move go through. Let's go for a flamethrower, and now I'm expecting the opponent probably running flamethrower and energy pool. So I might, no, I was going to say I might come in with my Haxus, but instead I'm going to come in with my Lucario. Shield once, go for a full counter farm down, and Lucario's energy is absolutely deadly here. So let's see what the opponent wants to do. They're going to come back in with the Azumarill. I'm going to go for a close combat. This is resisted damage. It probably does still take them out from this range, though. We got that shield, though. We can get both shields if the opponent wants to double shield. They go for that double shield. We're going to stay in with Lucario. Lucario and the opponent is going to swap into Ferrothorn. So I bank a charge move, swap back into my Haxorus there, and now we can go for a breaking swipe. And at this point, we should be looking pretty good here. We do actually get the attack drop once again, which is really nice. And now we can just go for a full counter farm down, then go for Flash Cannon, which would have taken us out, but doesn't matter now. I can just safely let this move go through. We have a Shadow Ball loaded on my Lucario, and I'm actually going to go for the close combat just because I wasn't entirely sure that we banked the Shadow Ball, but it doesn't matter as a close combat takes out the Azu, and I'm able to take that game. But GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we see Toxapex in the lead. So I'm going to say swap. We've got two better answers. So we swap into our Bruxish. The opponent not throwing. Well, obviously, they're not going to throw straight away as they have to go for a Sludge Wave to do any meaningful damage. But instead, they're going to bank their energy, tank the charge move because a Toxapex is very bulky. And now they come in with a Shadow Cradilly. Now they do over farm perfectly, throwing just before we make it to the next charge move. I'm happy to let the Rock Side go through. We should only have to tank one charge move from this Cordelli before we get the full Dragon Tail farm down, so I'm happy to let the first move go through. Sludge Wave should be doing a little bit more damage than that. 
So let's see, the opponent has a Lorantis in the back. So we go for a Dragon Claw, and the opponent throws on the CMP tie. So this is just going to be a Leaf Blade. Leaf Blade doesn't quite take us out. So I'm going to go for the Dragon Claw here, and then instantly swap into my Slowpoke. We do have a Shield Advantage, but this is looking very tricky for us. And the opponent's got to throw on alignment. That is perfect for me. Best case scenario, as I'm just going to try and commit to the full Confusion Farm down. The opponent got to throw a second Charge move, and if they, well... I don't think they will make it to another charge move, so they swap into their Toxapex. They're going to go for a Sludge Wave, but Slowpoke is so bulky. Can we get the farm down? Yes, we are able to do so. We've got back-to-back -back side shots loaded, but can we live this Fury Cutter? Yes, we are able to live that. Get off the second side shot, and Slowpoke coming in clutch, taking out the Lorantis, and I'm able to take that game. So once again, Heatran just absolutely shutting down those Sharmas. Now into next battle, we see Skarmory in the lead. This is actually the only Skarmory I saw in my six sets that I did with this team. So uh, I was obviously hoping to shut it down with my Heatran. And here we haven't even got it aligned yet. But let's see if there's anything we can do about that. We're going to go for the Drill Peck. The opponent can shield that up. Go for the full counter farm down. And what my opponent did, which was very smart, is they actually stayed in with the Skarmory initially. Knowing that I was always going to make it to a Drill Peck up against the Polyrath. But now they can still come out with a ton of energy. And they will actually be able to make it to another Icy Wind here before I do make it to my Aerial Ace. And I just need to hope that the opponent, for whatever reason, just lets this move go through. And we're going to go for the Aerial Ace, and they do let it go through, which is huge for me. Now we come in with the Heat Train, and they've got a Shadow Gligar in the back. Now, of course, Dig is going to be double super effective, but I don't throw straight away, hoping the opponent would go for the Dig, and they do. And now we can overfarm massively in this matchup. Go for a Magma Storm. Magma Storm going to grab the final shield, and because they are Shadow, this is probably going to be enough damage from this range where a magma storm will be taking out the shadow glycar and now it just depends can we live a brave bird it is resisted it still hits like a truck but we live that we make it to another magma storm up against the skarmory and this is easily gonna take out the skarmory with a triple defense debuff and i'm able to take that game so GG's to the opponent there. Into the next game, we see Frost Sass in the lead once again. So going to play this out pretty similarly to last game. I'm always going to shield the first charge move just because I uh, might as well. We're going to be able to debuff their attack with an Icy Wind. So going to shield that up and they go for Avalanche this time. So they don't buff their attack, but also Avalanche does hit a lot harder. So now we swap into our Weird Deer. They're going to go for a charge move anyways. And Avalanche does still hit pretty hard, but they come in with a Bastiodon, so they really didn't need to chip there before swapping it in, because Wild Charge, unfortunately, doesn't do an awful lot of damage when it is non-stab. But we're going to come in with our Shadow Gallade, and we are hitting for pretty decent damage here, even with these resisted confusions. So I'm thinking, potentially, I can put them into range where Leaf Blade will KO. Certainly not that range just yet, but they should be at the next charge move. So I'm going to swap, catch it onto my Shadow of Bomber Snow. This seems like a very very odd play here, but Flamethrower takes us out, and now I'm expecting my Shadow Galley to be able to fully sweep this game. We're going to farm to the back-to-back -back Leaf Blades once again, not throwing at the best timing. I thought that would KO, but it actually doesn't quite take them out there. But let's see, the opponent comes back in with the Frost Sass. We're going straight for the Leaf Blade, and I need it to be either Gastrodon or a Toxicroak in the back, and it is the Toxicroak, and we just barely make it to the Leaf Blade in time. After two confusions, we take out the Toxicroak, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there. Into the next game, we're going to see Shadow Rampardos into a shiny Shadow Sharpedo. So not ideal for me. Going to say swap immediately into my Shadow Pinsir. The opponent going to swap out into their Lugia. And do note, they were running Bite on their Sharpedo. So that's not nearly as bad for the Rampardos. Of course, Bite is still going to absolutely chunk. But Waterfalls would basically like three-shot us. So, I mean, we'll take whatever kind of advantage we can get. But here, we are able to grab a shield from the Lugia. They let the second one go through. They fully Dragon Tail farm us down. So that means they will make it to... Probably an Aeroblast here, so I'm definitely going to shield this up. Lugia is quite bulky, even in the Great League, but Aeroblast would certainly KO a Shadow Rampardos. And now they come in with a Tackle Ursa Luna, so I was committing to the Flamethrower since Rock Slide is going to be resisted damage, but honestly, probably could have just thrown the Rock Slide. I do end up throwing the Rock Slide. The opponent catches onto their Sharpedo, but they shield anyways, and that's perfect for me. Yes, I come in with the Ferramosa, Bug Bite, farm them down in an instant, and I do just barely make it to either lunge or close combat. Doesn't matter which one I throw here. We're able to take out the Ursa Luna, and I'm able to take that game. 
Alright, so going into the first battle lead into a Vigoroth, so not ideal. Gonna say swap into my Shadow Dragonite, and we're already met with a Fairy type. This is certainly not ideal. I'm gonna go for a superpower here. I tried to throw it on CMP, the opponent doesn't throw, so I actually give them a full Fairy Wind in for free. So, a bit of a mistake there. The opponent gonna fire off a charge move. They still need to go for the Moonblast because Seed Bomb is double resisted. It does not take me out. We now go for a Dragon Claw with debuff, but we actually grab a Shield Advantage in this matchup, which is probably the best case I could have asked for there. But Unfortunately, they leave the matchup with a ton of energy, so I'm going to fully sacrifice my Arctivax here, hoping that they've got a Lantern in the back, but the opponent baits once again, and at this point, I've actually got a decent amount of energy, so I might as well shield this up. It is finally the Moon Blast, but we can now Dragon Breath, farm them down. They come in with the Vigor off. We're going to go for an Icy Wind here, and I'm actually going to stay in, basically just force the opponent to throw their energy into my Arctivax to take me out, and at this point... My only win condition here is really if the opponent does have a lantern in the back, and there it is. And honestly, if in doubt, there's probably a lantern in the back in this meta. It is so common. So, Executor, if I just hide it in the back, especially since I've already got two dragons in the lead, did so well for me. We can now build up to the back to back seed bombs, going for the first one, taking out the lantern. And at this point, we can just fully dragon tail, farm down the Vigoroth, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to that opponent there, into the next game, awful lead once again, so I'm once again going to say swap into my Celesteela, the opponent is choosing to stay in, they're going to fire off an Icy Wind, clearly don't have an amazing response here, so Icy Wind is going to debuff my attack, they're still staying in, they're eventually going to swap into a Gligar, so Gligar actually gets completely walled by Celesteela and Shadow Skarmory, but now with debuff, these body Sams really aren't going to do too much damage, they can let both of them go through, they will have to throw a charge move to get rid of me though, so they will over farm a little bit, go for the charge move, Aerial Ace will be taking me out, and at this point I'm going to come in with my Shadow Flygon, can't really afford to shield here because I think this should just be an Aerial Ace, so I'm going to let it go through, Aerial Ace is going to hit for some decent damage there, we get the farm down, and now I'm going to swap instantly into my Shadow Skarmory, the opponent did stay in for quite a while, up against the Celesteela, so they make it to another Icy win already, we are going to over farm here, throwing on the CMP tie with the next charge move, and the opponent is staying in, so they are clearly very weak to the Skarmory in the back. So at this point, I'm going to have to start using my shields as the opponent goes for a second Icy Wind. That is going to double debuff me. They now swap into their Cresselia, and that's the reason why they didn't want to swap out. We go for a Sky Attack with double debuff. That does very little damage, but the opponent makes a huge mistake. This is going to be a Grass Knot. It is double resisted, so we're going to bank a Sky Attack, swap into my Shadow Flygon, and then the opponent makes another mistake by throwing on alignment, giving me a full dragon tail in for free now i'm gonna farm to the back-to-back -back dragon claws i hope this is enough to ko and it does take out the chrysalia at this point we're gonna go for a dragon claw could have gone for the scorching sands there but it doesn't matter we're able to grab the final shield win a cmp tie up against the dugong and sky attack will be taking out the dugong and i'm able to take that game <laughs> And we're able to take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we see Vigoroth in the lead this time around. So slightly better to see it in the lead, but still not that great. Dragonair only wins this in the even two shield scenario. Otherwise, the Vigoroth will be able to outpace us to the charge moves. And a body Sam won't quite take them out. So here, we're actually going to swap, catch the move onto my Avalug. And this... Well, it doesn't do too much damage here. Obviously, these counters are going to be super effective, but this is just going to be another body sound which we can live. So, often I used Avalug as a damage sponge since my other two Pokemon are very glassy. We're now going to go for a body sound into the Lantern coming in, and Lantern has a very good matchup up against the Avalug, so I am surprised they didn't swap it in, but I guess maybe they just didn't want to switch lock themselves. They come in with Altaria, and you can see my switch lock isn't quite up yet. But we grab the final shield, and oh my god, look at that damage. We get the full Ice Fang farm down, and the opponent just concedes the match there. Alright, so going into the first battle lead, Pelipper into Skarmory. So this is an okay lead, actually, just because we do resist the Steel Wings, but also the opponent is going to be resisting the Wing Attacks. Now, we're going to say swap into Extra Tool. The opponent responds with a Whiskash. They try to catch a Rock Side there, not able to do so, but it doesn't matter. They will still be able to CMP time me here as I make it to the back-to-back -back draw run. So I'm actually going to use a Shield. I know I'm not going to be able to flip this matchup, but I do want to at least grab one Shield from my opponent. So we're now going to go for the draw run here. This should be grabbing a Shield, otherwise, 
otherwise they will be losing switch advantage and at this point I'm pretty happy to let Excadrill go down. Now the safe option would be to come in with my Pelipper but I think they're in range where I might actually just be able to fully mud slap farm down the Whiskash and I'm able to do exactly that and now let's see the opponent comes in with a Vigor off so we're going straight for the draw run here and this is going to do a ton of damage if they don't respect it and they don't it nearly one shots them we swap into Pelipper the opponent swaps out at the same time trying to snipe with a sky attack up against the draw bar but we can tank that reasonably comfortably on the Pelipper we can now go for a weather ball we will make it to a second weather ball already and the opponent does have quite a lot of energy still so they will make it to the sky attack before we make it to the next charge move now here I'm not 100% sure if I can mud sap farm them down before they make it to another move and we have to remember that Vigoroth does have a body slam loaded so we go for the weather ball the opponent lets the Skarmory go down big mistake as they come back in with the Vigoroth they have to fire off a charge move body slam takes us out but I'm able to mud sap farm down the Vigoroth with my shadow drill burr and I'm able to take that game so GG's to the opponent there, into next game we see a superior in the lead, so great lead for me, although Aerial Ace, as you're going to see, non-stab, pretty weak move, and also from a bulky Pokemon, does like 70, 75% of our health, which is insane, but the opponent's now going to swap into an Umbreon, I'm going to full send the Bug Buzz, and that does huge damage from the Mothim, I'm thinking I can't quite farm them down there, so I swap into my Tyranitar, I get the snipe, I give up switch advantage though, and the opponent's got a Zoomreel in the back, and this is one of the worst possible Pokemon we can see, with this team, so I'm going to use my shield here, they go for the Ice Beam there, of course, Ice Beam probably wouldn't quite take us out there, but I mean, we kind of need to use our shields, because Hydreigon can do literally nothing with the moveset that I'm running, so I fire off back-to-back -back Brutal Swings, just need to grab the shields here, and I do grab the second shield from the Azumarill. Now, we are going to wait out the Switch Clock as long as possible, come in with the Hydreigon here, and I'm not going to try and swap straight away, because... Typically, an opponent is going to over farm on the first charge move that they throw, but they'll typically throw the second one straight away. But they come back in with the Superior. This is an opportunity for me to just fully farm them down, but they are running Leaf Tornado, which is annoying because now I kind of have to throw a charge move here. Otherwise, they will be able to throw another charge move, but I am double debuffed. So I'm going to swap, catch the charge move onto my Mothim as they reach the second Ice Beam. Ice Beam takes out the Mothim. And now at this point, I'm thinking, could go for the back to back Brutal Swings, but no, I'm going to be. I'm going to go for the double resisted Dragon Pulse and the opponent has just Rage Quit here that's why you are seeing a bit of lag but Dragon Pulse takes out the Azumarill and I'm able to take that game with the Lantern and take that game so GG to that opponent there very well played now into the next game we're going to see Frost Sass in the lead so I'm going to shield this up as the opponent goes for the Avalanche and now we can uh, the opponent comes in with Cradilly. This is really bad for me. We're going to go for a Rock Tomb here just because obviously my entire team being weak to grass. We kind of want to debuff their attack. Otherwise, they're just going to completely run through my entire team. We barely lived that. So I'm going to swap into my Palisand. I don't think Runarigus can really do anything at this point but we're going to save it anyways just because we don't want to give them an extra bullet seeds worth of energy we're not going to let this move go through as well i need to save my shield for my shadow Golurk. they've still got two shields remaining honestly this is looking like a lost cause but i'm going to play it out anyways there might be something in the back incredibly weak to go look that we haven't seen yet so i'm going to continue to play this out we go for the match that farm down and the opponent is going to come in with a Alolan Graveler, and there is that one Pokemon that was absolutely incredibly weak to the Golurk. I'm going to swap, catch the Rock Blast onto my Arena Regis, and at this point, I should be able to fully Mudsap, farm down the Frost Sass before they make it to two charge moves, and I'm able to take that game. We needed literally the most weak Pokemon, two ground type Pokemon, and we got exactly that. So very fortunate for me in that battle, but GG's to that opponent there. Into the next battle, we see Reggie still in the lead. So a little bit of an awkward one just because we are hitting for double resisted damage with the poison jabs and the opponent makes a catch onto Tapu Fini, which is actually the first and I think the only Tapu Fini I saw in these battles. I didn't expect to see it a lot more commonly, but it doesn't really matter. We could just let this go through. We are debuffed, but it's just a surf. And now they're in range where I can Dragon Breath farm them all the way down and I'm able to get that farm down. And as well, I was predicting it's probably a Zoomer in the back since that was the first Tapu that I did see. It's probably an ABB style team. And Hurricane hits for huge damage there. I knew they were not going to shield that. And now 
We're looking to be in a great position. Ice Beam coming through, gonna take me out, but it doesn't matter. They will not be able to bubble farm me down here. I'm gonna over farm as much as possible. Go for a Dragon Claw here. Gotta be careful of a potential catch. And the opponent swaps into their Reggie still. So we go for the close combat. And close combat should be grabbing the final shield from the opponent. It does exactly that. And now I'm gonna two shield flex on my opponent. Let the move go through. Once again, they go for Zap Cannon. They just can't help it, these Reggie still users. Why not go for Focus Blast? I don't understand, but it doesn't matter. Overheat coming through, taking out the Registeel, and the opponent will eventually just give up the match here by exiting, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we see Clodsa in the lead. So I'm actually going to stay in initially, see if it is Mudshot or Poison Sting. It was Mudshot, unfortunately, so I had to get out of there. We're going to swap into the Giratina. We bait out on a load of Ninetales, which obviously isn't great for us, but this is where Giratina is pretty good as we grab a shield advantage as the opponent isn't too quick to swap out. We're now going to let this move go through. Rayquaza, of course, will be completely destroyed by a load of Ninetales, so it is good to bait it out here. Now we come in with the Heatran. We can completely wall the energy here, so I'm just going to let this move go through and I will be able to come out with an Earth Power loaded. Obviously, Dazzling Gleam is going to hit for some decent damage there, but it's still double resisted. They actually come in with a Quagsire instead of the Clodsire. So, a bit unfortunate there, of course, because the Earth Power isn't super effective. But now I'm going to swap into my Rayquaza. I'm just going to shield this up, play it safe. It is the Stone Age. Stone Age would probably one-shot us, of course. Clodsire, pretty bulky Pokemon, but Rayquaza certainly has no bulk whatsoever. We're going to get the attack drop here, and I thought about no shielding, but honestly, I think the safe play is just a double shield now we can go for a full dragon tail farm down i'm gonna come out with nearly two breaking swipes loaded so gonna fire off the first one here probably gonna grab the final shield from the opponent breaking swipe coming through they actually no shield that i'm gonna swap into my heatran and unfortunately oh actually no never mind it wasn't that game the opponent is just gonna concede the match there and i'm able to take that game and into i think the final battle of the 13 game win streak we lead into a toxic rogue so this a fairly neutral lead matchup but I think Dragon Breath is doing a lot more damage than the counters, so I should be able to shield once, fully Dragon Breath farming down. The opponent recognizes that, so they swap into a zoom reel. We're gonna swap into our Ludicolo, and this is a really good matchup for us. We are down a shield. I actually don't care if they grab well, if I grab both their shields and they take me out here because I'm feeling pretty good about this. We can go straight for the Leaf Storm, and Leaf Storm will be grabbing a shield from the opponent. We make it to Leaf Storm number two. And this is going to be debuffed. It will not take them out, but they double shield their Azumarill anyways. I'm going to let this move go through here as the opponent is going to go for an Ice Beam. Ice Beam does less damage, and I think I can still make it to a charge move, but the opponent does snipe me with their Toxicroak. And let's see, they come back in with the Azu. I'm actually going to go for a Body Slam straight away because I figured a Grass Knot probably doesn't quite take them out there, and now they're definitely in range for a Grass Knot to take them out. So I'll let the first move go through, and then I will overfarm just slightly here, throwing all on the CMP tire with the Azumarill, and this Grass Knot will now be enough damage to take out the Azu. They've got Bastidon in the back, so it is not over yet. I think I need a debuff here with this Scald. So we go for the Scald. Scald gets the debuff, and now I will be able to live and make it to a second Scald in time, and Lombre coming in clutch once again, taking out the Bastidon, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to that opponent. That was... So GG's to the opponent there, and it's the next game, and I recognize this name because I did actually face them earlier in the night, so we are going to see the opponent running the Shadow Golbat in the lead, and they have a Chansey and a Vigoroth in the back, so maybe questionable that I let that move go through here, but we're going to go for an Ancient Power, and then I will swap into my Nidorina, and the opponent's going to stay in with their Shadow Golbat, going to fire off the Poison Fang straight away, not even going to farm to a potential Shadow Ball, going to let it go through, and here is the Chansey, so last time the opponent was able to swap out of the matchup and clear the debuff, so let's see if I play this any differently. We're going to go for a second Poison Fang, throwing pretty much straight away. But the more I throw, the more uh, time I waste here with the Switch Clock. And I'm going to go for another Poison Fang here. But unfortunately, just still doing hardly any damage to this Chansey. And I'm actually going to wait for the opponent to throw here. I'm actually going to use my Shield because otherwise, what else am I going to be shielding in this battle? We're going to go for a Poison Fang, number four. But the opponent will be able to swap back out into their goal bat. But I have not revealed Thunderbolt yet. So we're going straight for the Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt takes out the Shadow Golbat. I'm now going to swap into my Togetic here and I'm going to go and fish for a boost with Ancient Power. Honestly, it's not really going to make much of a difference here, but Ancient Power does not get the boost. The opponent going to throw their charge move straight away, so I'll let this go through. Psychic takes us out and I make a huge mistake here. I meant to come in with my Nidorino, but I got the size mixed up, so I come in with my very low health Nidorino. Luckily for me, I will 
Well, I go down there and the opponent's able to swap out, but if they've got a charge move banked, this could be very dicey. But here, I'm going to let the first move go through. They go for the body slam. I'm just going to full send an ice beam here. I think my lose condition is going for an unnecessary bait. So we go for the ice beam. Ice beam grabs the final shield from the opponent. And now here, I'm going to shield up the body slam. I will just barely be able to make it to another ice beam up against the Vigoroth. Actually, not sure if a horn attack would KO from that range, but ice beam does the job. And the opponent didn't have a charge reloaded on their Chansey. And I'm able to poison jab, farm them down, and take that game. To double resist this smackdown, farm me down, and take that game. So GG's to that opponent there, into the next game, and it's the exact same team. So I've actually faced this team maybe four or five times, so probably someone made a, uh, a video on it, because otherwise I don't know why you would run it. But here we're going to play this out exactly the same so far, but instead I'm going to come in with my Obama Snow here, still get the Leafage farm down, but instead of throwing a charge move, I'm actually going to let Bastidon fully farm me down. And you might think, why on earth are you doing that? But the reason is, I can come in with my Lucario, their switch clock is still up, or still not up, sorry, so I get a few more counters off, which means when they do come in with their Tall Terror, I can go for a Power Punch earlier, ramping up my attack sooner, and that means I'm going to be able to take them out faster than in the previous previous game and hopefully this will be the difference in this matchup but you're gonna see something quite awkward in this battle here every time I went for power punch I was getting like this weird starter lag where I could throw only one fast move afterwards which really threw me off and almost cost me the game but I do just barely hang on I make it to the power punch take another bastard on and I'm able to take that game so that's going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you leave a like, leave a comment letting me know. And as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. But with that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video and I hope you have a great rest of your day.